Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation, and this is our first international hero conversation. We're coming across the seas here, and we have with us Miss Natalia Klamowski, who is an automation engineer at Atline. So, welcome, Natalia. How are you? Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. It's evening in Denmark, and I'm here ready um, to chat with you. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's amazing what technology is doing. I mean, when we met, you were in a train in Denmark on a Teams call with me. So uh, now we're, we're, we're recording this. This is going to be heard all over the world. Uh, we have eco listeners as far down as Australia. So it's uh, I'm excited for them to hear your story. And Natalia, get us started because we, we got connected through Tim Wilburn, you know, and, and TW all right. Controls, all the 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 hundred, no, I guess, 26,000 plus uh, subscribers he has on YouTube who watches his his channel and we love what he does. He's like, look, Chris, you got to talk to, to Natalia. I was like, okay, man, if, if you say so, Tim, I definitely trust you. So I'm excited. And uh, maybe just tell us a little, about, a little bit about yourself, to, your journey to where you're at right now. Yeah, um, well, uh, I'm always happy to chat about my journey and talk about automation. And uh, I think me living uh, in Denmark, I uh, think it's a little bit maybe different uh, here. Yeah. I don't know. So... I hope uh, it will be interesting um, for uh, the people to watch and to listen uh, about automation in Denmark. My name is Natalia and uh, I'm originally from Russia, but I've been traveling around the world and living here and there. So I actually moved to Denmark about two years ago from China. And uh, in China, I was working as a kindergarten English teacher. Wow. So, <laughs> so before um, me starting the college uh, study automation engineering, I didn't have any technical background and I didn't even knew I had it in me. Uh, but then, um, you know, I've been uh, underpaid and overworked and I decided um, I want to become a high skilled professional because I still wanted to, uh, to travel the world and be able to find a job in any country I want. So I had, um, it. it's not like I had a passion uh, about engineering or automation. I think at that point, I didn't even know what does it mean automation. I just wanted to be able to find a job. So, and um, I started doing uh, research about different engineering fields and about like mechanical, chemical, biomedical. And I, I felt the pull towards electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. So I started reading about that and I was thinking it might be something I can do. And then uh, in electrical field, there was uh, also different kind of subfields, controls, powers. And I was reading about controls, I remember. And they, uh, it was saying that you work with industrial robots. And that was that <laughs> because I, I think it was so cool. It sounded so cool. So I decided that I want to try it. And um, because education for me, uh, I knew that I will have to pay a lot of money. So I was, I decided to go on Udemy and do some um, courses, uh, PLC programming and some AutoCAD to just get the idea if it's uh, something I can do, if it's something I will be enjoying doing. And um, this is how I met uh, uh, Tim as well, because I was uh, reaching out to all instructors on also YouTube. So, and we became friends since that time. And um, then uh, when I realized I really like it, I uh, started looking for, um, to get an education and I um, I wanted to um, study in English speaking country because I was very tired from a language barrier in China. Uh, so I found um, um, two years education in Canadian colleges. Um, they were um, called automation technicians or something like this. And then the third college I accidentally found uh, in Denmark, automation engineering program in English. 
and I decided to apply to three of them. I was accepted to all of the colleges. And I remember on LinkedIn, I was actually asking people, I have this choice, Canada or Denmark. What do you think I should do? And uh, because at that point, a lot of people were from America. Everybody was saying, just go to Canada. Right. There are plenty of jobs. Um, but uh, I actually, um, college in Denmark, they, the way they communicated uh, and the way the uh, um, uh, kind of a process of accepting student uh, felt more personal. Mm -hmm. They organized a Zoom meeting to chat with you um, so I could uh, ask about the program um, and I could also see the professor that uh, I'm going to teach me. Um, and uh, they were very quick to help me with all my questions while um, for Canadian colleges, I just felt they have a lot of students and they don't have time to actually take care um, of uh, each and uh, of them. So, and I knew because of my previous experience, if you move into another country, somebody have to help you out uh, in the beginning. It will be either your work or school. Mm -hmm. So I felt like in Denmark, they will help me out if something happened. And um, I also received a 20% uh, reduction of the fees, kind of a scholarship. So, and at that point, it was cheaper for me to go to Denmark. Plus, Canada is still so far away, I don't know, from everything. So I thought, you know, I will try it in Denmark. So uh, I moved to Denmark knowing nothing about uh, what it's like living here, except that people are happy, you know, like everybody knows, like Danish people are happy. Um, and yeah, this is how it's all started. I, um, uh, I was taking two years education. So I think in other countries, it's equivalent to being a technician. Right. Here, I'm able to call myself automation engineer. Uh, so it's complicated, yeah. Um, uh, I also, somebody like at work, sometimes I um, say that I'm a software developer because what I'm doing is developing a software for the machines that uh, we are producing. Um, and I wanted to talk a, a little bit about the education uh, in Denmark. So um, the college has a very practical approach so during those, these two years I've been studying, we didn't have like exam exams. When you just study for exam, then you go answer a bunch of questions not related um, to anything like practical. Instead, uh, every semester we would be working on two projects. Uh, so you work about two or three months and then you present your project and you have a certain criteria. Um, so and then, um, uh, teachers are rating uh, your projects. And I think it was amazing because you have a certain criteria you have to hit and then you have all the freedom to explore and to build your solution. Yeah. And uh, with every project, we had more and more freedom. So I remember on my second year, we have to uh, just uh, decide what kind of project we want to do and something. And we actually was working um on something for kind of related to um, our, like uh, we were going to the bunch of uh, companies in Olbo. It's the, where uh, the city where the university is. And we were interviewing them because we have this, um, in the pharmacies, we have a robots. Mm -hmm. so, we, um, so you just order and the robot bring it to you. So we were going to this bunch of like, um, pharmacies and uh, interviewing people and they're so open in Denmark they would invite us in shows how the robot works some of them stop using them so we were asking why what are the challenges and so on it was a lot of fun and it was very practical Natalia you're, you're obviously you have done a lot you from I think you said kindergarten teacher in, in China to now you're, yeah. you're basically an automation engineer designing robots for manufacturing big jump there a lot of things that I am curious from the Denmark standpoint, from a manufacturer that you're working with and that you're supporting, what do you, what are they seeing as some of the challenges? Because I, I see some things in the, in the, in the States from a challenge standpoint from, from industry and manufacturing, but I am curious from Denmark, what's, 
what's what's the big problem that we're trying to solve over there? Hmm. I think just the price of the production. This okay. is what is common. So it's very diff uh, it's very expensive to produce anything in Denmark. So um, a lot of companies having Danish companies having uh, headquarters uh -huh. uh, in Denmark and then uh, outsource the production to other countries. But I'm uh, very kind of proud that our company producing everything here. Um, so um, cool. how about skilled labor over in Denmark? Is that I mean that's definitely an issue in the states where we don't have enough skilled labor. You know those those slots those 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 industries are struggling to get the next generation. How is that being approached? Um, what I really like about Denmark that um, it's very common to um, go and study e even in your late career. So and um, I even uh, read the research from one of the colleges um, in Denmark. They were as the government were developing a plan to re-educate people so they can take uh, a new jobs that, you know, like um, technical jobs. Because uh, there is a, a big shortage in this, especially automation field. Um, however, it's actually not really popular um, because I remember in my college, all these marketing classes, web design classes were full of students. There were like 50 people in a class. Yeah. Uh, and there were several classes like this, while automation classes, there were only like two for Danish and um, international class. And we started Danish class with 30 people and international were 15 people. And only 10 people from Danish class graduated and even less, like less than 10 graduated from international class. Really? So why, why yeah. do you think the, the, the disparity there between the, the traditional, like you said, the marketing courses and things like that versus the engineering, what is there, is there a perception that, that people are, are that have associated with that? Uh, yeah, I think, um, not, it's not very common to talk about different career paths in automation. So a lot of people think, for example, you have to be an electrician and then you have to go and take this education and then you will be able to find a job. Mm. Um, they, and a lot of, I think, uh, don't really know what exactly they will be doing. So, mm -hmm. um, so some of them get in a bit frustrated that we have in a project uh, management classes, which are, I think extremely useful. Right. And then other people, getting frustrated because we don't have enough electrical design classes which is also important right so but i think it's just um perception of the industry mm -hmm. um, so, so let's, uh, yeah let, let's say you're in all right I'm, I'm gonna put you in front of a high school or maybe a senior senior class at a high school you, you just go 12 years from that kindergarten class you were teaching right and <laughs> You're sitting there in front of them. Now, you've been through this experience of, of going through education in Denmark and the world of automation and what, it, and what that's open for you. What, what are you saying to them to inspire them? You know, what, what advice would you give them? Where, where would you point them to get, to get more interest in the field that you're in versus, you know, the more traditional type routes? I would start with saying that automation engineering is a very creative job. Because you have to imagine the whole process and then design it. Uh, I would also point out about industrial robots because I feel like before to be automation engineer, it was only PLC. But now, like a lot um, of this uh, solution involves collaborative robots, industrial robots. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you can focus on robotics, you can focus uh, maybe on PLC programming, you can focus on HMI design, uh, which is also very uh, creative. Um, I think I would start with that. that. That's great advice. And I mean, I think just if people, first of all, if they see you, they, they see how passionate you are. You, you haven't stopped smiling since this interview. And I love it. This just shows how, how excited <laughs> you are about this industry. So I think you're all over it. We just we have to share more. We have to let people see those different career paths. Like you mentioned, those just knowing what paths exist 
is so important. We have to take, um, you know, take that and be intentional to speak that to people, to give them those options. And I am curious because you, you're such a, a, a bright person just from, from your personality. I love it. When are you the happiest? You know, what, what work are you doing that gives you that sense of joy? I feel like I'm generally a very positive person. Okay. It's very common here in Denmark to do a personality test. So, um, and most of the people were like, we have this uh, color test where like red is like a dominant and then uh, blue is introverts. Uh -huh. And then uh, I was the only one in the class with a very high yellow <laughs> <laughs> personality. So um, I'm just like this. And I think, uh, actually, when I was applying for jobs and I was having an interviews, um, a lot of people were telling me that I'm quite different from a traditional stereotype mm -hmm. PLC programmer. Right. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm really glad because um, at some point I was thinking I will have to mute my personality, you know, to be more serious, more assertive. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I remember my teacher was telling me please never turn uh, down your personality yeah. because th this is what people are looking for. And on all my like kind of job interviews, um, people were saying that they really want uh, somebody um, who is like, uh, be able to talk about automation because very often you have to work with the customers yeah. and you have to communicate in a team. So well, I would jump on that. Don't don't change a thing because it's, it's just your type of personality. It's that type of energy that inspires the next generation. So this is so, so cool. I, I am curious because when we were talking before the, the recording, you said like, oh, highlights. I got highlights. Uh, well, what are some highlights for your career that you like to share with us? Cause I know you just watching you online. You've done some really cool things out there. OK, I have something um, uh, during uh, in. Uh, in our college, uh, we had a Lego Mindstorm robots, and I know people think it's um, it's just the toys. But uh, if you look at the Lego Mindstorm software uh, classroom, and then you look at an ABB collaborative robot, for example, uh, the software is literally the same. So if you know one thing, it would be so easy to transition to work uh, with the robots. So. Um, and I was uh, trying to learn um, Python programming, but because uh, I wanted to apply it to, to something in real world, uh, I was combining it with Lego Mindstorm series. And Corona hit, you know, and uh, I built um, a, a Lego sanitizer. And I remember I was sitting, it was like Friday evening, I was building that robot and I was feeling a bit um, um, upset because I'm not socializing. I'm not chatting with my roommates. Uh, and I was asking myself, why do you even do this? Right. Uh, and then I, I brought it to school because I, I'm very proud of everything I do. So I try to show it to everybody. Um, so, and you know, it was a lot of fun. My classmates tried it, my teachers tried it. And I made a video and posted it on uh, LinkedIn. You know, also I was very concerned if I should post it because it's such a silly video, right. I feel like. And then um, I was contacted by a productivity um, director of the Danish company. He previously worked in Lego company here. So, and when he saw it, uh, so because a lot of people from Lego like this post, so he saw it and he um, contacted me and offered me an internship. Uh, where I had uh, to design a collaborative robot cell to um, make a proof of concept of automating one of the um, manufacturing processes wow. in the factory. Um, it was huge. It was everything I wanted because it was collaborative robots. And um, in our school, we have UR3, uh, like old series. And then for this project, the company bought UR10 and I was unboxing the robot. It felt like Christmas. <laughs> Uh, but uh, what he told me, why he decided to contact me, because um, he, he, first of all, really enjoyed watching it. And he saw it as a creative project that applied to solve a real-life problem. Yeah. 
So um, if you have, like, please showcase your projects for all the students. I will highly recommend everything you do, just post on LinkedIn. What, um, is, what a story there. Now, can you share, maybe we can get a, a link to that post and share that video for our listeners out there. We'll put that in the show notes, Natalia. What a great story. Yeah. That was yeah, amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. But you're, you're right. Be proud of what you accomplished and, and take time and share it because you never know that may get, yours got to the right person of influence, obviously, and you were able to take that, uh, that opportunity and expand upon it. So what a great, that's a really fun highlight. Yes, because it's not only, I don't know, because sometimes also automation can seem boring for some people, but yeah. there is so much fun you can do, fun things that you can do and explore. And uh, yeah. Now, now, let's just stick on that theme. You opened the door for me. Fun things for you to do and explore. Let's talk a little bit about you outside of work. So in Denmark there, what, what hobbies do you have? Well, I'm quite a restless person. Okay. So I like to juggle all different things. Um, uh, we have a lot of water everywhere. So every, almost every city has a fjord or some access to the sea. Okay. Um, I was living in Olbo five minutes away from the fjord and people really use the water here so a lot of people have boats people do kayaking and uh, i invested in paddleboard so ah. uh, so i was able to go around the fjord um we have a dolphin or maybe two so we i me and my friends we would go to the places where the dolphin seen to kind of like wait for it and take a photos I was going uh, paddleboarding around the island yeah. in the fjord, and uh, I uh, found uh, a family of seals who were chasing me for 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, um, I do biking. I'll, again, people bike here a lot. Yeah. Everybody has very fancy, very expensive bikes here. So. <laughs> Um, I'm biking, uh, I'm, I'm dancing, and then um, I spend the time doing uh, Lego Mindstorm. Or oh, before, now all I do is working. <laughs> right, right. That is so good. It's so funny. I, just, I literally just gave my, my oldest daughter a paddleboard yesterday before this recording. And uh, so we're getting into paddleboarding ourselves. So sound, now, we haven't had any seals chase us yet, but maybe we'll get there one day. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a scary experience. You know, there was nobody around. Right. And they were just like looking angry at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you're smiling. They just probably want to come and just hang out with you because you have such that bubbling personality, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, how about family? We love talking about family at Eco Ask Why. So, Natalia, what, what would you like to share with us there? Well, I have my mom, and my mom uh, lives in Russia. Okay. And, uh, since I was little, I was telling her that I will be living in another country. I don't know. I, I just, and she was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I think um, she was quite upset when I moved to China. But then, uh, you know, she made a peace with it. Uh, so now we uh, use uh, Skype. Yeah. Chat uh, several times a week. Uh, so I'm going to visit uh, my mom from time to time. Uh, but, uh, you know, she didn't, she doesn't like traveling right. and she doesn't even have a passport to go abroad. <laughs> so, um, but for now I'm planning now, uh, I'm already started planning my, um, uh, Christmas vacation. Uh, some of my friends that I made here, they want to go to Russia. Right. Right. <laughs> so I think it will be uh, fun and I can also visit my mom on holiday. There you go. There you go. Hopefully that can definitely happen. So thank you for sharing that. Now I am curious at the, from, from in Denmark, you're an engineer. What do you enjoy consuming for fun? Like podcasts, any, any books, YouTube. I know you're a big Tim Wilburn fan, so we know you were, you're watching him on YouTube, but just anything you find value that you think others may. I mostly do YouTube. Uh, I watch uh, team uh, videos, um, but I'm not actually, I'm not really big in podcasts, you know, I'm trying to get into this, okay. but uh, unsuccessfully for now. So we, we know yeah. you at least have one you're subscribing to eco ask why. So we'll start with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. How about now 
We we do a game, Natalia. Is we call it the the lightning round, where I just fire a bunch of random stuff at you, and let's see what comes back. And it gives our listeners an inside look of to who you are. Just some fun, quirky things. So if you're willing to play, we'll jump in. Okay. All right. All right. I'm I'm, I'm excited for this. The first international lightning round. So favorite food. Kimchi, everything with kimchi. I get addicted uh, in China to spicy food, and then my roommate uh, here in Denmark is um, has Korean roots. Okay. So we cook all the spicy food together. Very good, very good. What, now, what, what's your favorite adult beverage to wash that spicy food down with? So um, I'm ashamed for my nation because I don't drink vodka. Okay. And- <laughs> <laughs> So um, I'm I'm actually not a big drinker nowadays. Um, I mostly drink beer, Royal Classic. It's like a Danish brand here. Okay. Um, oh, I like drinking cocktails like Aperol Spritz or um, gin and tonic. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Now, what is uh, what's your favorite app on your phone? Google Maps. <laughs> Google Maps. <laughs> Because I had to travel so much, um, so I moved to for my work. I'm, I had to move on the south of Denmark, right. so I use it every day to get to. Like today, I had to bring my bike uh, to the fix shop, and right. uh, then another day I had to go to submit a visa because I'm this in transition period um, where I still have student visa and I'm making my work visa. So I had to go to another city, right. to another part of Denmark. So. Okay. My, let's say we <laughs> now what's uh what's on your nightstand my water bottle water bottle um, all right all right uh, you know, i don't know i think like i get it from china okay everybody brings water bottle and i actually always drink hot water hot water okay yeah okay that's the thing you know in china whatever happens to you like if you have a migraine you have a stomach ache you just like, feel i don't know down drink more hot water and it just stick to me <laughs> wow okay there you go now how about a uh, a guilty pleasure pastries um well it's not quite guilty i feel uh, but i cannot i think this is like um uh my habit from russia because in russia we always have a tea and something sweet after every meal okay. so i cannot live without pastries <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. How about uh, all-time favorite movie? Hmm, there are so many. I really like sci-fi movie. Um, I think Pacific Rim. Okay. One of my favorite. There are like big robots as well. So. Yeah, I think so. You're, naturally, the big robots has got to be Pacific Rim for you. Okay. I was also obsessed with Transformers before. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> very good. Now, I am curious for this. What's the coolest place you've ever been? So as much traveling that you've done, what's the one place that you you got to go there? Hong Kong. Okay. Um, yeah. I I think I'm not sure with the political situation these days, um, uh-huh. but um, a couple of years ago, I've been to Hong Kong and uh, I went to this Victoria Peak to look over the city and it just felt like I'm in another universe. When you watch this sci-fi movie with super like tall buildings, it just looks surreal. And uh, I think while I was living in China, I went about three, four times there. Wow. And every time I was able to discover something new. So on the one side, you have this super cool skyscrapers. And then in 30 minutes away from the city, you have beautiful crystal clear water and nice beaches so that's awesome very good very good now how about last question in the lightning round dogs or cats um (laughs) it's a very tricky question because i'm like a stepmom of two cats my roommate has two cats so i kind of also adopted them so I really love them, uh, but I do feel like I'm a, a dog person. <laughs> very, good, very good. Well, we'll, we'll let you pass on that one, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, this has been a blast getting to know you, Natalia. So we always uh, wrap up Eco Ask Why with the why, and it talks about your, your passions and what drives you. So somebody wants to know what your personal why is. What would it be? 
Oh, it's such a tricky question because um, I also feel like till this uh, day I was just focusing on present. So I know I need to finish my de- education and then I need to get a job and then I need to get my working visa. And uh, now when I'm actually did it, I think my goal was just to find a place where I can settle down when I can uh, be happy with my job, when I will be happy with the climate, because um, I really enjoy cold climate, when, uh, where I will um, be, where I can fit in, uh, in the society uh, that has kind of similar mentality to to mine. So that was very important for me. Um, And I think I, I was, for me, I was just, I'm just trying to build a life for me, you know, and for, I don't know, my future family. Right, right. Well, you, you're, you're doing great things. And I tell you what, Natalia, this has been a wonderful conversation, a way to get to know you. So for people that want to maybe follow you or connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, I'm uh, quite active uh, on my Instagram. so okay. um, We'll put that can, link in the uh, show notes. Yeah, absolutely. I posted um, a lot of uh, my projects over there and I was sharing experience uh, of how is it to study in Denmark, study automation, and I'm sharing things, what I do for work now. So yeah, I'm going to get out. Very good. Well, make sure if you're listening to this, go check out the show notes, get connected directly with Natalia. And thank you so much. This has been a blast getting to know you. Been a fun hero conversation and, and, and we're so, I'm personally just delighted to know that, that someone like you, with your personality, that you're out there inspiring others. So thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure was all mine. Thanks for chatting with me. Yes, man. You have a great day. Bye. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.